All right, how's everybody doing today? This is Rother over here at New Era Gardener. And uh, we're going into the springtime, and it's an exciting time for all of us that uh, use biochar in our gardens. I actually make my own biochar, so I know what goes in it. It is hardwood, and as you can hear, it has been very done very well um, by using hardwood and this was not quenched and I don't know if you can see that but you get this is what you get when it's done you have all these little pores in the biochar all these little pores and it acts as a sponge when you actually add any type of liquid to it Usually, when you're done doing your biochar, you also quench it. But for this, I did not quench it because I'm making liquid biochar. So, that's how I'm activating this particular batch of biochar. It's um, going to be quenched in two different things. One, it is going to be... It is C90 with humic acid. And we all know humic acid is good for our plants, helps them uptake all the nutrients. So it's a good thing to use. Um, I have used it just as a liquid, mix it up and put it in my plants. So, and it has a great benefit to them. The second one I'm going to be doing is... I mixed up, or what would I say, I actually, not fermented, but I seeped um, alpaca manure in a, in a uh, five-gallon bucket, and I let it sit for a couple of days, and all the nutrients, all the bacteria, all the biology starts to come out of that. And if you've ever done alpaca manure where you are seeping it you'll notice it gets very very foamy at the top after you add water to it um, in a couple of days or even in that day that's all the biology that's all the bacteria that comes off of that manure um, it is a cold manure so we're not worried about uh, any of the bad bacteria but you don't want to let it sit in that bucket for five six days you just want to seep it so you actually only want it to sit there for maybe i did mine for two days opened it up it smelled earthy and like manure so not a bad smell but this biochar has not been quenched after i got done making it i let it sit in the bucket cool off kept the top on so it wouldn't inflame um and this is what I have. So there's two batches here. The thing is, when you start adding water into it because it's so dry, it is going to actually lift up. I'm going to put the buckets on top of each other and then put another bucket on top so everything stays down. So I have a gallon. I have one gallon of the C of the C90 with um, with humic acid. They actually now sell a C90 with minerals, which is the plus, which is actually the um, humic acid added to it. So I added one tablespoon to a gallon of water this, as I said, is just pure alpaca manure. I did add a little bit of molasses um, to it just to feed the bacteria and the uh, microbes. So there is a little bit in there, in both of these. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to pour this over this. I'm going to pour the over this one. And then I'll probably have to add a little more water. So, I mean, as you can see how dark this is, 
it was just screened to get out any of the bigger particles that broke down. So I'm gonna pour all this in and as I start to see that it starts to lift, now it's starting to rise because of the light weight. As you can see, I don't know if you saw that, see how it's now starting to rise? So, but if you could hear it, you can hear it just sucking up that liquid. It's bubbling, it sounds like it's bubbling. You can hear it crackling. So that's that's it sucking up the moisture. And as you see, there's not a bunch of sludge coming out. This is pure. I mean, I'm down to the end of it. And as you can see, there's no sludge. If I put there, there's a little bit on there but my, my gallon is clean. I will add some more water to this once I put the other bucket on top of it to push it down so everything is submerged in the liquid. And for me, I probably will keep this for probably two days, two days, probably one day is more than enough, um, but I'll probably keep it in there for two. So this, is a little more clear because it is the C90 with the humic acid. All right. And this is going to do the same thing. It's going to start to rise. And this one's a little more cloudy. I am going to shake it up because I know there's some particles on the bottom. Not all the humic acid had dissolved. So, and with the same thing with that, as I look down into it, I see the bubbles coming up. That's the biochar actually sucking up the nutrients. You see the bubbles all around. Um, I'm going to pour the rest of this in. And once again, there's very little debris this probably sat for probably probably about a week when I made it um, so all everything pretty much dissolved and that's all pretty much you want to do is put everything together and you could put a top on it but because I want everything to go down and get submerged I'm gonna put bucket on top of bucket and if, if it's not full to where everything is submerged, I will add a little bit more water to it so that it does get submerged in it. I want everything submerged in it. And the way I'm gonna use this is I'll take it out, strain it all out, strain the liquid out, and what I'll take and do with, with that is I'll sit it on in one of my screens and let it kind of drip drip out. Um, the biochar would have already sucking, sucked up all the nutrients into the biochar. It would suck up all the alpaca manure um, leach. It would also have sucked up all the bio, uh, all the C90 plus humic acid into it. And that is another way of activating your, your biochar. And this is just a liquid way of, of activating your biochar. So I'll do it the same way I do everything else. Once I, I strain everything off, I'll let it sit for probably a night just so that it dries and then I'll crush it. And as I crush it, I will put it in a, in a, a bag or a bucket, two separate buckets. I'll probably put it back in this bucket, put a top on it. And then certain plants that I'm going to use, this I will give to it. I might do it in my flower bed. I may just sprinkle it over my flower bed before I start to um, kind of break up the earth around it, around the plants, or add any more um, 
compost to it. I have a lot of compost to add to my beds that I made myself. So I'll put this down and then put, put uh, compost over it, mix it in a little bit, and then this will be ready for the plants and the soil and the biology that's in the soil. So it's by activating it already, we're making it already active, already neutralized, so that this way that the bacteria in the dirt and the um, biology in the dirt would just move right in because it already has food inside of it. Because it has also some molasses, the biology is going to take it. So it, there's no, the only one that I'm going to say actually has biology, living biology in it right now is the um, manure because of what the manure is. The manure has biology already in it, it has microbes in it, and when you leach it, you're bringing those out, and now you're putting them into the manure, into the biochar. So this is gonna be some real good biochar. I'm gonna be really happy with this one. I already know that. This one here is a trial and error. Let's see how this does. Um, some plants are gonna do better with it, and that's all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna actually take the two, and I'll maybe mix it in my beds, some I may mix into my, my bedding for my plants, for tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers. Um, I don't know yet, but that's what we can do. Um, there's many things that you can use, which is great about biochar because when it hasn't been quenched, it's like a sponge. So when you add these into it, they suck up all the moisture. And I know already that there is not a lot of liquid going to be left in it, so I would be adding quite a bit of water. Um, this one here, <coughs> excuse me, this one here, which is the C90 and humic acid, um, I probably should have made it a little stronger than recommended because now that I'm gonna add water, more water to this to bring it up, it's going to kind of weaken the strength of it. But that's all right. It's going to get what it needs. I mean, it's almost full. <clears throat> Once I add the other bucket on top, I'm not gonna be adding that much water. And I don't know if you can see it. It is still kind of bubbling. So that is showing that the biochar is sucking up all of the uh, nutrients. So I am going to let it sit here for a little bit. I mean, and if you, uh, I, I know you probably can't see it, but if you see this one, all in here, there's bubbles, <clears throat> there's foam. That's all the, the microbes that are ready, already alive in, in there by adding a little bit of sugar you bring them alive so um this one's the same thing there's not a lot of water there's not a lot more water i need to add to it but it does i will add some water to it so everything's looking good we're gonna let these i probably will let these sit for probably about a day or two probably when i get home from work tomorrow i'll strain it off probably crush it and put it in a bucket um, I don't want it to dry out. I want it to stay moist. So I'll probably put it back in the same bucket after it's been crushed and actually a top put on it so the microbes could stay alive in that. All right. So that's all we did today. But like I said, there's many ways you can do it. I also did a leech of um, my worm castings. So I took my worm castings, put it in a, in a uh, five-gallon um paint strainer and i actually agitated it into the water and then i let it stay in that water for a while um i didn't show you that because i i got enough room up here for two buckets so <clears throat> that's another way of doing it that one also has a lot of active biology and active microbes in it so that's also going to turn out to be a good one also but that's what we're, we're doing here, and we're getting ready. Tomorrow is the first day of spring. So 
Um, I'm not gonna turn my bed yet, but I just wanna have different products ready to add into my soil, into beds that I may have not already added biochar to. So um, sometimes what I do is I only add biochar or active biochar. I only add, I only add active biochar to my beds. <clears throat> I don't put unactive biochar on my beds. You can, um, and, and most people who have more knowledge than I have say that, that if you do put in biochar the first year, you're going to see a decline in your, um, your plant activity because of the biochar is taking all of the active biology and microbes that are in your, your bed. So I usually don't add for that reason. I don't know the truth in that, but um, I've had great success with my active biochar, either the dry biochar that I make or the liquid. So I'm happy with it. All right, so this is New Era Gardener. I appreciate you guys watching the video and uh, happy gardening. I hope everybody has great success. I will as I start to plant and my plants actually are growing. I will actually come back and show you guys what the active biochar has done to those plants and how those plants have reacted. All right, enjoy the rest of your day. Once again, this is Rother at New Era Gardener. And if you like the video, subscribe because there's a lot of stuff coming. Leave a comment of what you may use for active biochar, but I appreciate you watching. All right, thanks. Enjoy.